Once there was a girl, <laughs> his name was Harpa, and he was beloved of the people. And he had a good friend who was his squaw, Hawker, which means hawk. And they had many adventures together, but in the fullness of time, they all thought he should marry. So he went courting and found a woman in love. I asked her to like him, and she agreed. And all was in, going to be in readiness for a festival of a wedding. And he invited what relatives he had, and all his friends, and neighboring Jarls, chieftains, and all of his people. But two days before the wedding, a messenger, muddy and wet, came riding up to the stand, saying, Jarl, Jarl, your cousin Wolfram is wrecked on a cove, and I know where it is, but he, he needs your help. He needs to be rescued. Hakon, who did not like this particular cousin in particular well, still had the burdens of kinship. So he got ten of his best rowers, and he and Halder went along, and followed the directions to this cove of the wreck was supposed to be. It took them most of the day to roll there, and it was coming twilight when they hit the cold. They found no sign of a wreck. They each their ship on their own sand and began to walk along the shoreline, calling over from sand, looking for refuge, looking for anything. And the, the cold was first usually surrounded on all sides by forest with just a peninsula of sand in between. And when they reached the farthest point away from the ship, from behind him, the Earl heard a voice saying, I am here, cousin, and I have a surprise. And they turned from the trees on either side, the front of the ship, came men in armor, bold lock blades, mercenaries, 50 men, probably armed, heavily armed. And they were twelve, with nothing but their swords. What have I done to you that you seek my life? We are alive. Nothing except decide to get married. I am your heir, as things stand. You have no other living male relatives. My people will never make you Yarl, said the Lord. I do not care about that. I care about the gold and the land and the cattle. That I care about. You know the value of nothing. That may be so, but I need to have it. And turning to his friend, the Earl said, Well, my friend, I think we may die this day. That may be so, my Earl, replied Hopper. But if we go to Odin, let us go to him like warriors, sitting. And he drew forth his sword and lifted his voice. And Hawker had a voice that would rock the very clouds in the sky and fill them with singing. And the twelve men all sang. And they charged the fifty. Now, the time of God is not the time of men. At this moment, the sky began to roil with color, which southern people call the northern lights. But we from the north know this is the Valkyries riding forth to bring back the souls of the dead. And in the space between two arguments, or two, leader of the Valkyries said, Wait, sisters, listen. And they heard Halper's voice raised, and the other voices joined him and saw twelve men charge fifty. Now few men know this, but unless there are direct orders from Odin in a battle, it is the Valkyries who choose to die. Orchard said, follow me, sisters, in the space between two hearts. And the men charging the fifty ever after swore that a cold wind swept by them, and every man of them went to his death of old age, saying, they began to die before we ever closed ranks. 
They watched their enemy fall before them. Not a blow of theirs but told. Not a blow of the enemies that did not seem to be blocked somehow by their sword or some means they did not know. And the men died. And they died. And they died. And suddenly the twelve realized, against all expectations, they were winning. And they redoubled their efforts. And they broke through the ranks. And the way was clear to the ship. Now a good day to die is a better day to live. We can ask any warrior. <laughs> and they sensibly ran toward the ship. But Halper, who was last, holding the rear line, looked back, and because a skull lives with a foot in both worlds, he saw her, Orsher de Valkyrie, beautiful, glimmering with the lights of the aurora, her long wind braids falling past her turfs. And she said to him, I liked your singing, Skald. You arrived with me one day, but this is not that day. Now go. Being a wise man, he went. <laughs> <laughs> and he clambered aboard the ship, and he looked behind, and there was not a living man on the beach save Wolfram, who fled from something no one else but he could see. But he saw Orchard chasing him down taking her spear, and yanking his very soul from his body, she said, you are not even fit for the halls of hell, and threw his soul into the howling wind of night, where it vanished with a last despairing cry. And Halker sang all the way home, and all night the glorious lights in the sky followed them, until they faded with the dawn, the arrival of the home dog. And they all was married, and lived out his years with good sons to follow them. Halker he gave a stead, and Halker too married and raised children. And at the end of their days, they talked about that fight, because when they sent men back to bury the dead as his own just, they found 50 mercenaries, but Wolfram's body they never found or any trace to get ever lived. That is the story of Hakan and Halkin and the twelve who charged him. <laughs>